Follow us to stay updated on debates, discussions, facts and tips about health. Click on the subscribe button and the bell icon for latest updates. Hello viewers. I am Dr. Shikha. Welcome you all to Thip Media's show Health Files. where we'll be discussing about the disease asthma globally asthma affects 262 million people it must be surprising to know that according to the lung india journal india contributes to over 42% of global asthma deaths and the main reason behind this is considered to be the lack of right medication so to increase awareness about the disease today we'll be discussing the basic aspects of asthma with dr sarth prastogi who is a consultant pulmonologist specialized in respiratory medicine with 10 years of experience so let's get going without further ado welcome dr sarthak to thip media's show health files my first question to you is how can asthma be defined so asthma is basically a respiratory condition which is manifested by complex uh, interaction of genetic factors and environmental factors which lead to a chronic condition in which there is breathlessness and wheezing and cough may be present in it this is to put it in simplest perspective for a common man to understand okay so uh, going forward uh, with asthma uh, any age group can be affected okay it's and uh, both the sexes are equally affected but uh, the incidence is rising as of now in in last few decades So, Doctor Sarthak, my second question to you is: What are the signs and symptoms of asthma? So, as I said before, uh, signs and symptoms mainly patients present to us with uh, uh, prolonged cough, uh, episodes of breathlessness, wheezing, or uh, they come with a complaint of chest congestion or chest tightness. Uh, sometimes they have histories of allergies, which which trigger these symptoms. and many a times patients tend to have a a simple type of uh, asthma I, i should not say simple but a, a type of asthma in which there's just cough nothing else so we call that cough variant asthma but these are the main signs and symptoms and and, and the doctor will elicit uh basically wheezing if present at that time it can be heard by a doctor sometimes patient also appreciate themselves that there is a whistling or musical sound coming with their breathing mainly at the end of their at the end of their breathing out phase they they are able to appreciate that some some noise like a whistle is coming along with the breath okay so coming to my next question what are the causes of asthma so uh, to keep it simple we can define uh, we can keep it uh, prenatal or that is before birth the factors which can decide uh, a person is at risk for asthma and post birth uh so uh, pre uh, pre birth or prenatal it's mainly the genetics and the family history there are complex uh, genes which are involved and 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 usually a patient with asthma tend to have a history familial history in siblings or in their parents or or grandparents cousins have history of asthma or allergies in the family uh after that a uh, big factor is during pregnancy of what a mother goes through a uh, mother who's malnourished during pregnancy is not having uh, adequate diet she is not gaining adequate weight during pregnancy there is lot of sugar intake or uh, the food uh, which is given to the mother during pregnancy is uh, lacking vitamin d and is lacking polyunsaturated fatty acids and uh, micronutrients they are at risk and if the mother goes through complications of herself being an asthmatic and and poorly controlled asthmatic the child in the future has a higher risk of developing asthma also if a mother goes through complications of eclampsia that is uh, a complication of late stage of pregnancy preeclampsia or eclampsia then there is also a higher risk of the child developing asthma in the future coming to post birth uh one of the major factors is uh, uh uh a prematurity that is a person uh, that is a child born before the term and uh, having chronic infections or recurrent infections in childhood having exposure to smoke at childhood similarly when when the child is inside the inside the womb mother is getting exposed to smoke or or uh, 
mother is herself smoking then the child also has a higher risk so similarly in infancy or in early childhood if a person is exposed to smoke uh, they have a higher risk of getting uh, asthma in the future how does mite indoor uh, fungal growth we usually see that there is mold on the uh, especially in uh, cities like bombay there is moldy growth after monsoon that having that water collection and and the wooden furniture or wooden uh, utensils they they uh, accumulate mold mold can be there in the bathrooms these molds they they release airborne spores and they can cause allergies and lead to asthma cockroach allergens are also responsible uh, and indoor animals if you have pets especially cats and birds they put you at a risk of having uh, asthma when very common thing is childhood respiratory infections if recurrent or especially there is a uh, bacterial infection called mycoplasma they they put a person more at risk for having asthma and with time the air pollution is increasing and probably it is considered the air pollution as the main reason for increase in childhood asthma and the other thing which is worsening with with uh, passing decades is an epidemic of obesity a child having obesity or a teenager having obesity is at a higher risk of having asthma or developing asthma and as the person go grows up uh, the other major risk factors which per, puts a person at risk for asthma is mainly smoking sometimes uh, uh, some uh, what you can say is some occupations put you at a risk of developing asthma like uh, baking there are a lot of chemicals which are used in baking and 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 these agents can cause asthma then there are uh, your location to the main roads or highways or traffic congested roads also put you at a higher risk of asthma so these are the major there are other ones also which are not very well proven but these are the major major causes of asthma okay so my next question to you is how is asthma treated so uh, asthma is treated based on your uh, level of severity and level of control so depending on your symptoms the severity of your symptoms and the frequency of your symptoms if you are having uh, night time symptoms or day time symptoms the doctor will decide but it mainly consists of inhalers a lot of people have reservations of inhalers that they are addictive they are not A lot of people think that inhalers will make you weak, will make you dependent, and that is why they prefer for alternative lines of therapies and alternative uh, 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 medicine they they approach to. And the fact is, if a child takes inhaler properly and regularly, and and a growing teenage takes them properly, their lung growth is optimal, mm-hmm. and and they tend to grow up better than a person who's not been given an inhaler. Mm-hmm. during his asthma episodes or to control his asthma episodes so it's very important that we understand inhalers are essential and backbone of asthma treatment apart from inhalers there are certain therapies oral tablets which are available mainly they are called as leukotriene uh, receptor antagonists so they uh, can be given in conjunction in conjunction with your inhalers or without them also in some cases but usually it involves one or two uh, oral medicines in combination with inhaler for a home based asthma care when a person gets sick enough and goes to the hospital there are other treatments but for home based treatment these are the main things an inhaler which will change the dosage and the frequency and the types of inhalers will change with the severity of illness and 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 the control of disease and uh, uh with time if the disease is getting controlled we can come down on the treatment and similarly if the symptoms are increasing we can go up now if a person comes with seasonal allergies or seasonal uh, asthma exacerbations so uh, uh, then we can uh, start the patient on treatment just before the season is going to begin and and continue for a month or two after the problematic season is over similarly there are people who are uh, present with exercise induced asthma and uh, that's mainly in colder countries for them we tell them to uh, take regular treatment and plus inhalers before they start their therapy 
basically we can tailor the therapy according to the patient's needs patient's symptoms and and uh, other thing which depends also in treatment is patients other comorbidities so a lot of uh, older adults they have, tend to have asthma they tend to have uh, heart disease simultaneously and and these treatments which are given for asthma they interact with heart conditions also in some cases mainly they push up the heart rate and and uh, people can people with the uh, complaints of arrhythmias which is an irregularity of heartbeat tend to have a little bit of trouble with these medications but we have lot of safe inhalers now available which tend to cause less cardiac side effects and and a person can be managed so it's basically a, a uh is basically uh, we have to factor in what is the patient's condition we can uh, for a, for an individual patient we can tailor the therapy according to his level of asthma control according to their symptoms according to their trigger factors and their comorbidities so, so dr sarthak my last question to you would be can asthma be treated using home remedies so first thing that we have to understand is asthma is an incurable disease it can be controlled and and uh, unfortunately till now we don't have a cure for asthma but with proper treatment we can control the asthma to a level where a person can lead a perfectly normal life for decades to come considering this if a person is diagnosed with asthma i would not recommend for a person to go for home rem- remedies only Mm-hmm. yes home remedies if you are trying to eliminate the trigger factors in the house that's good okay uh, changing a house or changing your home furniture which has been uh, uh, molded uh, or which has been soaked by water or uh, uh, infested with molds or uh, home treatment but i would not recommend only going with home remedies for a person himself alone there is no amount of uh, ayurvedic kadas or homeopathic medicines which have shown to reduce asthma we have to understand the fact that asthma tends to go into remission for decades also in some cases so a person who's having severe asthma episodes now or for few years goes on treatment hits puberty and after that after hitting puberty his symptoms may go into remission for a decade for two decades or three decades but some point of time sooner or later the asthma symptoms will come back so a lot of these alternative lines of medicines they try tend to uh, either claim that their treatment their uh, treatment can cure asthma and and person takes it and and goes into remission and thinks that whatever he has taken has worked it may not so and a lot of our asthma for example a lot of asthma patients started the uh, during covid time they started doing uh, ayurvedic home remedies which they had received on whatsapp simultaneously they stopped meeting other people the incidence of normal respiratory viral infections went down air pollution went down they started a little bit of exercising or 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 some other factors improved and for a lot of asthma patients especially the young ones so with ayurvedic med- and homeopathic medicines a lot of my patients were convinced that they uh, improved and and it is more often than not it is a coincidental factor that that they have gone into remission for some of the other reason and and during these last two years of covid it was an improved air quality lack of interaction that is why they had lack of uh, other respiratory viruses which is one of the major reasons for asthma exacerbations so they were convinced that whatever they did with home remedies with ginger lemon and and steam inhalation that improved their lung function now uh, the only home remedy which may help or home exercises which may help is breathing exercises and asthma to a certain extent but they cannot control your asthma symptoms they cannot treat your asthma exacerbation episodes and they cannot cure definitely they will be an adjunctive to the therapy but can never be the main uh, modality of treatment it should always be a steroid based inhaler or a steroid based nebulizer followed by other treatments which have to be the main stay or the main pillar of asthma treatment uh we know that there are a lot of therapies which people go and they swallow fish or or uh, they go go for prolonged homeopathic medications 
is just that the coincidental factor that patients tend to go into remission for few years at a stretch mm-hmm. that they feel it's it has worked a lot of people who move out of bangalore they they feel that their asthma has improved and and simultaneously they might be taking some some alternative line of treatment and they feel ki that has improved more but moving out of bangalore has caused a uh, improvement in their lung function now a lot of our patient with asthma i am not really sure about it but a lot of our asthma patients say ki the pollution and a combination of pollination or pollen is 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 a resultant factor that their uh, uh lung function or their asthma gets worse in in bangalore and simultaneously in delhi during the winter months the people with the asthma have lot of difficulties so basically a correlation of uh, home remedies with with improvement of certain other factors tend to for them to believe that that their asthma is improved a lot of these times the, these home remedies na sometimes they do alternative line of medicine that is laced with steroids and that steroid in any form uh, in any oral form can lead to uh, improvement in asthma symptoms and and they feel that this alternative line of treatment is working and they tend to ignore inhalers so as a as a important message of this interview i would just like everyone to understand inhalers are designed to directly deliver the drug into your lungs with minimal side effects on the rest of your body they are not addictive they will not make you dependent on it they will not make your body weak in any form in fact on the contrary during the growing phases if a person or a pregnant mother takes inhalers it will leads to an improvement in lung function and lung growth of the person and in case of a pregnancy it leads to a better lung development and lung growth of the uh, fetus or the child inside the mother that will be my main take home message from this interview thank you so much for imparting such knowledge to us and our viewers thank you dr sarthak for being with us thanks a lot for having this conversation and giving asthma the space thank you so much this is